This is the story of Shay's Rebellion and the events leading up to it. Scene 1 begins at the farmer's house, and the tax collector shows up at the farmer's house, but the farmer cannot pay his taxes. circumstances but they can help as much as they can and you still need to pay it and if I can give you any good advice I would recommend selling whatever is expendable. Can we postpone the payment? That's for you to take up with the bank. That's not something we can sell here. Okay. Alright. Very well. What are we going to do? What are we going to sell? I mean I can make some more furniture. Maybe cattle, gas, heifers. But the Johnsons, they, they've they got to pay too. The Shays? The Smiths? Oh no. Mama, what, what's going on? It's okay, guys. Let's go to your rooms. place two weeks later. The tax collector returns to the farmer's house with the sheriff and the farmer still cannot pay his taxes. Farmer, 
or in this situation, considering our history, I do not agree with these laws. So I must put aside our relations and bring justice to this court. So therefore, your land and home will be sold to the profit equal to the debt. You will be taken to court immediately. This court is adjourned. It's ridiculous. No class is a working man. Higher class, do nothing. In scene four, a group of angry farmers storm the courthouse after hearing the judge's decision. The judge barely makes it out alive. Judge! Have come out, my poor farmer! Get the judge! Get the judge! She be being an unfair. You're right. Where, where did the judge go? The judge is gone. Ugh. Grace, stay here. Guard the fort. Make sure she don't come back. In scene five, Daniel Shades leads a group of angry farmers armed with pitchforks and shovels to take over the arsenal at Springfield. To the arsenal! Ah. Evan, quick. <laughs> in scene six, we take place at the governor's office. The governor tries to get help from Continental Congress, but none can be given. The governor then takes matters into his own hands and has private funds for a private army to fight against the angry farmers. Governor. Yes, my good man. The farmers have gotten past us and they went to the arsenal. They took all the weapons. We must send to the Continental Congress for aid, post haste. Send with you this letter and to hurry. Sir, the Continental Congress can't. They don't have the troops or the money to help us. Well, send for the leader of the militia. Surely they have men that they can spare for us. Yes, sir. Yes, Governor. We require men to fight against the rebelling farmers and veterans. They've taken all our weapons from the militia. Do you have any men you can spare? I have nobody in my militia, but I'll be happy to help you. Well, if we've no militia and no aid, we must form a private army. Send for General Benjamin Lincoln. We must have him. He can help us. Yes, Governor? We need you to form a we need your help to form a small private army to fight the rebelling farmers and veterans. We've no aid and no help from the militia. I'm in. We can pay you. I'm in. Who else? I'm in. in. We must gather and fight them. Onward. Onward. Okay, man, we gotta go get this rebe these rebellious farmers. Let's go! Three dead farmers lay dead on the battlefield. In scene seven, we are back at the courthouse. Daniel Shays has been captured by the militia, and Shays lost men during the battle between the farmers and the militia. Shays and his men are now being tried for treason and will be sentenced to hang.
Daniel Shays and Farmers, please stand. You were brought before this court because you led a group of rebellious farmers against your state, Massachusetts. Therefore, I find you guilty on the charge of treason. You will be sentenced to hang. This court is adjourned. In scene eight, Governor Bodwin has a change of heart and decides to pardon Daniel Shays and the farmers for their hanging. I, James Bowdoin II, Governor of the State of Massachusetts, address you hereby to announce the new fate of these felons. The, socio the socioeconomic issues of our Commonwealth has affected all of us, not least our lowest class. But I ask you, compare your monetary woes to that of the farmer, struggling to pay his debts without selling his livelihood, of the veteran, paid only in empty promises of, well, of fortune fighting for our freedom, of the common man, you can hardly feed his children. My brothers, in this conflict, neutrality is not an option. We must all choose a side. Those before you chose theirs, and you before them chose yours. Tell me, will punishing these fellows change the fact that our poor cannot eat, that our veterans will not see the gold they were promised? Will it convince the common man that his cause is not just? No, I say, burden bears burden. Therefore, we must ease the burden on those with the heaviest load before we cast aside those of us higher born men. Therefore I, James Baldwin II, Governor of Massachusetts, hereby declare that I shall grant pardons to those who seek them. But do not think that, it is a, that this is a forgiveness. Nay, those who dare attempt this blasphemy again shall be met with swift and just punishment. If that be all, I hereby call this meeting to a close. Free! Kids, we're free. That's free. Oh my god, that is great.